Hi guys, it's favourites time again. If my voice sounds really strange, um, I have a sore throat. I have tea and strep cells and all kinds of things surrounding me to sit and film today. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's... If it sounds a bit fuzzy, everything is a bit fuzzy at the moment. Uh, so what are we on? April. It's my April favourites today. I have more kind of cosmetic-y things than normal, um, I think. I always feel like I come to the end of the month and I'm like, I've used this stuff for ages. For a long time, I don't feel like I've picked up any new things. Um, so my favourites have been very samey. But this month I have got a couple of new things to show you. First of all, let's talk about kind of a face of makeup. Um, my base recently has been the Super Plus BB from Skin79, which I know I mentioned somewhere last month, but I don't think it's in my favourites. Really, really enjoying this. It's a really great colour match for me. Difficult to find because I'm quite ghostly white. I don't know if it's kind of picking up on camera. It is so grey outside today. Um, it was raining all day yesterday and I'm hoping for a little bit of better weather so I can do some gardening because next weekend it is bank holiday and Chris and Emma are coming and I'm really excited about that. And a little bit of a random favourite there, my garden. Never been kind of a summer person, never been an outdoor garden kind of person, but we've lived here for five years and I finally bought us ourselves. We finally bought ourselves some nice garden furniture and started doing some stuff to the garden um, to make it a little bit nicer to be in because the kids are loving it at the moment. So we wanted somewhere uh, we could sit and kind of be comfortable. So yeah, totally off on a tangent there, but really great today and I'm hoping that it's gonna brighten up, but that's, I am paler than this, I think. Um, I don't think they have kind of shades at all, but correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but this has got SPF 50, uh, wrinkle improvement supposedly, which is always good, um, and it's also whitening, not totally sure about that. I think it's more, or I like to think it's more because I don't want it to be kind of like, stripping away my skin or anything. Um, but I think it's more, um, you know when you get something that's supposed to be evening and it's supposed to kind of get rid of your dark spots and stuff? I hope it's more that because I do have quite a lot of pigmentation around my face um, from pregnancy, um, especially around my eyes and bizarrely on my top lip. So hopefully that will help with that. But whitening doesn't make me nervous because I've watched shows about that and it's a bit scary. Um, next, brows. Brows have been big this month for me. Um, when I have my hair done, oh yeah, my hair. <laughs> my hair's different, it's pink. Don't panic, it's just temporary. Um, I'm kind of considering going a little bit darker in the future. Not mega darker, but maybe low lights and a slightly darker shade of blonde. Um, so because of that, I thought I would have some fun with my super, super blonde while I've got it. I don't know how, how soon I'll go darker, but yeah, I thought I would have some crazy colors in my hair. So this is pink. It's actually three different colors. It's, I think it's called Future Pink, Flamingo Pink, no, flamingo pink, lavender, and pastel pink from Directions. And I mixed them all together with some conditioner. And this is what I got. Much darker in the roots. And I really like that. It's an accidental ombre. Um, so yeah, because my roots are coming through, when I first have it dyed, I have to like go real pale on my brows. Or I think it looks a little bit insane. But once my roots start to show through, and this is about, about six weeks of growth. So nearly time to go back. Um, I like to do some quite dark, bold brows, and that's what I've been doing recently. Um, and to do that, I've been using this Makeup Revolution Ultra Brow Arch and Shape, which has no shade name. You guys know. Makeup Revolution, stop doing this to me. I have no idea what shade this is, but it's pretty dark. Um, it's what I have on. But I, I have this on really lightly. Let me see if I can swatch it. I feel like I sound like a, a man. Look, that's pretty dark. Um, so I really do kind of just slightly touch the hairs with this um, to get a much lighter finish and it's still super bold. Um, and then I use the end of the archery pencil, the blonde shell, not that that matters, archery pencil from Soap and Glory to kind of um, comb them out. I do like this, but it's, it's not perfect. There's so many different things that I don't like about this, but I will use it up and I will keep it because it's got this spoolie on the end that is really, really awesome for brow. It's very, very stiff and yeah, I just love it. So, combination of those two things. The one from Makeup Revolution also has a felt tip end, which I'll swatch for you as well. Much lighter and if I was going to do my brows fully, I would probably use that end. Um, but I, I do really like this. If I had kind of just a spoolie thing, this would be a really great product. At first I didn't like it because it's very heavy and very thick and kind of waxy. It's a little bit difficult to work with, but once I got the brush to kind of brush it out and manipulate it a little bit, I really liked it. Um, next I have another eye product that's quite new to me, and it's this Graphic Ritual Kajal and Eyeliner from Kiko, Kaiko, 
tell me, I don't know. Um, and it's blue. Came out with their new summer collection and it's a blue eyeliner. I know that's like, you know, oh, it's blue. But I just forget about blue eyeliner and I really like it on me. I think with a kind of totally neutral look and a little pop of blue eyeliner under brown eyes, I think it looks really nice. Purple, marginally better. Um, but I like this and I'll swatch it for you. It's kind of a real bright, ooh, almost metallic in that light. Turquoisey blue, I love that. And they've been wearing that under my eyes. Um, for lips, and this is what I'm wearing today, no surprises for those of you that have been watching for a little while, and it's the Rimmel Exaggerate um, East End Snob liner, really enjoying this. I actually have MAC Faux over the top of this, but that's just kind of a, a covering, it's basically exactly this colour, and what gives that bold lip, whenever I'm wearing this with anything on top, whatever it may be, someone always asks me what it is. And the lipstick is by the by, I love MAC Faux. But what makes this a real standout bold lip is the liner. And I fill my lips in completely and then go over with a lipstick. Um, I would absolutely recommend this. Laura from Laura Loves Beauty keeps telling me that there's one from number seven that's a lot nicer, uh, creamier, just generally nicer to wear. And that by comparison, this is really horrible. So I have to try that. If you guys know what she's talking about, please tell me the color recommendation, uh, color selections, recommendations uh, that you would recommend. <laughs> makes no sense. Um, because I'm definitely going to go and check out some of those liners. I'm like into liners right now. Um, I have a blush that I've been using a lot recently and this is one of the ones that Marnie sent me in our swap. This is Pinched by NYX. Sorry, NYX. I've been pulled up. NYX. It is called NYX. Um, yeah, I really like this. I think that's really cute. Let me just see if I can get a swatch for you. Yeah, I think that's really sweet. It's just a really nice kind of summery blush. I mean, it's, an, it's just a, a regular blush colour. It's nothing particularly special. It's got a tiny sparkle in it. doesn't really show up so much on the skin. Um, but it's a nice kind of flush of pink. Um, and I've been wearing it a lot, so I like that. I would like to try some more NYX blushes as well. Um, for my hair, since my hair extensions came out, uh, which was a breath of fresh air, I loved my hair extensions, don't get me wrong. Uh, but there were so many things that were wrong with them. The application was fantastic. They felt really sturdy in my hair. Um, I never kind of had an issue of thinking they were slipping out or anything like that, which I was warned of both by people, um, like viewers and readers and um, the woman who put them in. But the main issue was when I went to be colour matched, my hair was a different colour. If you are this blonde, or not this blonde that I am right now, but if you are kind of like platinum blonde, um, you guys will know, and bleached that way, you guys will know how difficult it is to keep your hair one colour because you are forever toning it to get it back to that kind of non-yellow colour. And I must have been slightly brassier when I went to see her for my consultation. I just didn't even think about colour match at the time. So she looked at my hair, then she ordered the hair. When I got there, my hair was a lot icier coloured uh, or icier in tone, and the extensions by comparison looked yellow. Um, now, when I was on holiday and my hair got some sun, they were almost exactly the same colour, which was great. But then my hair was a little bit yellow, which I really struggle with. When I made my video about being blonde, someone said, your hair isn't blonde, it's white. Fair enough. Um, I would call it white blonde, but whatever. Now, some people would want that kind of slight warmth to the hair, and they would really like that. Um, but I really, really didn't. And the reason that I took them out in the end was that I toned, I tried to tone my hair and the extensions did not shift at all. So my hair went even whiter and my extensions stayed the same so they just looked ridiculous and I had to take them out. I took them out myself, no problem, um, no damage, no nothing, really, really easy and the extensions are still intact, I could have them put in again if I wanted to. Um, but that, and also I had them cut after leaving the salon that did them by someone that wasn't very good and she just left them really blunt. I had to have them cut because they were too long on me. Um, they just kind of looked a bit insane. They were difficult to manage, but yeah, they were just too long, so I had them cut and she just didn't do a very good job. So the way that they kind of, they were a little bit wiggy, the way that they, they sat on me, it was strange. But I would have them in again, for sure. I like that they were temporary um, and it's kind of like a bit of a change, but I love my short hair. So much easier to deal with. Um, <clears throat> I'm feeling very husky right now. Um, so much easier to deal with and yeah. Back to the favourites, the products that I've been enjoying because of that. Do you, you know, does anybody else do this where they just sit and go off on a complete tangent or is it just me? And then they don't edit it out. I'm sure that's just me. But, anyway. Um, this, which matches my hair right now, the Lee Stafford Messed Up Putty for Choppy, Putty for a Choppy Number. I really love this and I use a tiny, tiny amount. I've been using this for months and months and it's barely, I've barely scratched the surface. 
and it smells like all of Lee Stafford's products, which is delicious. Almost like Angel from Thierry Muggler. Muggler? Muggler? I don't know, whatever that is, Angel perfume absolutely amazing and it's um just gives me a little bit of texture but it doesn't feel sticky in my hair or anything and i can brush it out and it's dull all over it and it's awesome love that um last am i on to the last one i am last beauty favorite is perfume and this has a lid if you want to see it all together there we go has a lid a little bit prettier i've wanted this perfume Oh my god, forever, since I worked for Urban Decay. Who was watching me then? When I worked for Urban Decay, I think that was 2010? Yeah, it was. It was actually the year I started YouTube. I worked for Urban Decay, would you believe? Um, <clears throat> I started in April, YouTube, and then I, I had another job, and then I was made redundant from that job, and I randomly got, like, the the counter manager job. I'd never even worked in a shop. Oh no, that's not true. But not, not in a makeup kind of capacity. Not in a department store, nothing. It was the most random job in the entire world and it didn't really work out because the hours and things were insane. I used to work till like midnight. And it was super stressful for not enough money. Um, I just, it was just like looking back, I'm like, how did I get that job? It was so weird. I actually got the job through like sending YouTube videos and blog posts about Urban Decay and showing how passionate I was about Urban Decay and that's how I got the job. And now I hear that lots of people can't work on makeup counters if they do YouTube and blog because they can't be impartial. But yeah, that was a bit, a bit of a random time. But when I worked for Urban Decay, another tangent, I worked um, on a counter next to the Givenchy counter and I used to go and spray this all the time and it smelled absolutely amazing. And this is like five years ago, so I find the perfume tastes change and sometimes you'll love something. I used to love Hugo Boss Deep Red. That was my perfume of choice as like a, a late teenager. Um, absolutely. Oh my God, it was just like wafting towards me. It smells so good. Yeah, as a late teenager and recently I went to smell it again I thought, oh, I hate that, I really don't like it anymore. It's so weird because it was just, it was everything to me at the time. Bizarre. Um, but yeah, I expected not to like this so much but I found it in duty free while we were going on holiday and I went and smelled it and was like, yes, I'm buying this. It's amazing. It's still expensive. Even in duty free it was £40. Um, what is this? I can't tell how many mil it is. 75 mil, so I suppose that's quite a lot for 40 pounds but that was the duty free price so i don't know it must still be quite popular but it's the play intense by Givenchy, not the original play which is in pink packaging this one is amazing and it lasts on me and i can smell it on me and i just love it so much and leave bought me that so that's an extra favorite because i didn't pay for it okay on to the random favorites i have some weird random favorites this is one of them it's my tea mug slash coffee mug i've been much more into tea recently um, just because it's so much more soothing for my throat and I just, I drink like tea and beer, that's kind of it. Maybe fizzy water occasionally, if coke was in the house I would drink it but I don't buy diet coke anymore because I thought that, that was being really good and now on an evening because we haven't got diet coke I'll just drink beer. Maybe that's not so great. Anyway, um, tea, <laughs> I'm just forever refilling this cup and this is our Las Vegas um, Starbucks cup and it is from the You Are Here collection. I was collecting the other ones, the black and white ones, but you can't get them everywhere. They're so beautiful. Really like the china -y kind of embossed and really, really nice looking. If I have one around, I don't think I do. Um, yeah, I was trying to collect all one kind and Lee bought me one back from Germany. It's another completely different kind. So I think I'm just gonna have to make my peace with it being an odd collection, but I love these ones. Um, also, this is gonna be my breakfast. It is 10 o'clock. Um, Krispy Kreme donuts. I'm obsessed with Krispy Kreme donuts recently. Every time I go past a Krispy Kreme concession of any kind, I have to buy a dozen glazed donuts. I don't like any others. I'm really picky when it comes to donuts. These are amazing. I just, just original glazed donuts from Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme and Seaside Donuts. They're the only donuts that I like. If Lee bought like 24 donuts from Asda of all different kinds, I wouldn't even touch them. Only these and Seaside Donuts. Um, and lastly, in the non-TV favourites, because we're going to get to that in a second, lastly, this book, um, which was sent to me earlier in the month, and not something I would normally mention on my videos, I will review it, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, I bought Fleur's book, did I mention that in a favourites? I think that I did. Really, really liked that. But this is, there is seriously something for everyone. It's called Front Row, it's got Louise Rowe, who's like a celebrity stylist, I've seen her on TV shows and stuff. Um, but 
it's literally got something for everyone in this book. It goes from um, like how to pick normal clothes, you know, styling, regular styling book stuff that you would expect. Um, there's a whole section on how you should dress for the body that you have rather than the body that you want. Uh, kind of accept the body and the shape that you are and dress for that body. It says something like, oh man, I'm not going to be able to remember. She says something along the lines of, um, don't dress for like the girl that you want to be in five years, she can buy her own clothes. I liked that. I just, I really liked that. So kind of just accept what you are and dress the best that you can for what you have. And then um, it goes all the way through like picking diamonds, uh, which is totally random, but something that you would be interested in at some point in your life. Uh, how to choose them, how to choose them for you, etc. Uh, on a practical level and also like, um, to, you know, a luxury level. And then it has like how to style rooms in your house. It's so, so good. I love this book. I haven't got all the way through, but I've been kind of picking and choosing sections that I'm um, interested in at the time. Um, and it's one on my garden as well, which I've read and really enjoyed. Just would absolutely recommend that book. Really, really enjoying it. Now, on to TV. You know, I love my TV, and I'm going to make this a short segment this month because I've really talked about other stuff a lot. Um, Vampire Diaries I'm still watching, but an episode a week is killing me, so let's not even talk about that. Um, tried to get back into the originals, but I just found out that Claire Holt, um, Rebecca, has left after the second season, so I don't even think I'm interested in the originals anymore. It's nowhere near as good as the Vampire Diaries, I'm just not, it's not getting me. Um, Grimm, I just started watching because Liana at work told me I need to watch it and it's awesome. I think I'm midway through the second season and it's totally got me hooked. Towards the end of the first season, dropped off a little bit, but the cliffhanger at the end of the first season brings it back and the second season is awesome, so I would recommend Grimm. Um, Suits, we started watching again. We'd watched a few episodes of the first season and Lee wasn't really into it. And then because we'd stopped watching, um, <clears throat> everything else and everything had kind of petered off. I said, let's just give it another go. We've been taping season four on Sky for like months, just in case. Um, and we really like it. So we watched all three seasons of that and then we're about to start the ones that have just been on TV because we've got them all on catch up. And what else? Third Rock from the Sun, but I mentioned that last month. I'm so loving Third Rock from the Sun. Such a nostalgia hit. And I think that's probably it for the stuff on Netflix and things that we're watching at the moment that's like, really grabbing me. I need to drink this because it's getting cold. Yeah, I think so. Um, but as always, please leave me your Netflix recommendations. Oh, season five on US Netflix, not on UK Netflix. Season five of White Collar just came on, which is so exciting because we stopped watching it two years ago because all of the seasons had kind of like just stopped, but they only stopped making it last year. So I've got two more seasons to watch, five and six. Season five has just come on Netflix. Um, US, so we're super excited about that. It's like a show being cancelled and then revived two years later. It's the most exciting. So we're re-watching season four right now in preparation to really appreciate season five. And I don't know if I mentioned Lie to Me last month, but we watched all of that and it ended really abruptly because it was cancelled and I wasn't prepared for it to cancel and I can't really talk about it because it was amazing and I'm really upset that it finished. It didn't give me an end to it. Apparently there's no, there's never ever going to be any more, so disappointing times. Um, but that's it for TV. I am currently listening to Casey Musgrove's, um, or Casey Musgrove. <clears throat> I can't remember. Same trailer, different park. Her album is in my car right now. Um, and that's going to be it for my favourites for this month. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully I'm going to drink this tea really quickly before it gets cold. Um, and before I make another video, so my voice will be slightly less like this. Um, and yeah, if you haven't already, and you have stuck out to the end of this video, don't forget to check out my Michael Kors giveaway on my other channel, which was to celebrate 20,000 subscribers over there. And yeah, um, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!